Okay, hello friends and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to format your musical theatre script or libretto. And we're going to be talking about some tips and tricks, things that I do to make it as clear as possible for somebody to read. We're going to be comparing uh, some other musical scripts that you might be familiar with. And then we're going to be talking about the most important thing, no matter what style that you go for. So let's get into it. Okay, we're going to jump across to the screen now and take a look at some musical theatre scripts. We're going to be starting with uh, Heather's, Heather's the Musical. I've personally never seen it. Uh, let me know if you enjoy it. I've heard it's very good. Um, now, as you may notice straight away looking at this script, uh, the font is the classic courier style font that is usually associated with film scripts. Now, that leads me to my first point, and the reason that this video might be useful for some people is because film scripts uh, have a way of being formatted that is very strict, very rigorous. There is an industry standard of formatting for film scripts that you see, from the font uh, down to the margins, down to literally everything. Film scripts are pretty much schmicko. If you're going to be writing a film script, there is a very clear way that you're going to be expected to write it professionally. Musical theatre, not so much. So that gives us some freedom, but also sometimes uh, freedom makes it confusing or difficult to know the best way to do it. So when I straight away look at this script, I'm thinking uh, that it's a film. So personally, myself, I like to steer away from the career font just so that anybody reading it absolutely 100% knows that it's not a film. Now, if we take a look at the screen here, it even is written a little bit like a film script. We've got stage is black, interior, Westberg High School, September 1st. And this is really good information. We've got setting, whether it's inside or outside, when it's set. But again, it's presented as very much like a film script with the interior, exterior. But it's it gets across the information very concisely, so I like that. Now, we've got um, the stage direction, the setting direction, we've got the character's name, we've got dialogue, we've got stage direction, dialogue, then here we've got singing. Now that is a lot of different pieces of information which brings me to my next point is that when you're writing a script is there is a lot of different types of information. So we've got character names, we've got dialogue, are they singing? Is this a stage direction? And for the reader, whether it is a producer or a director reading it or the performer themselves, it needs to be absolutely clear which pieces of information are which. So when I write scripts, I really like each piece of information to look very different from each other. But here at the moment, they are all looking very, very similar to me. If we look at this just first opening chunk here, um, it's all using the same font. There is uppercase and lowercase, I can see. So we've got this first stage direction in lowercase and the setting here in uppercase. We've got um, character name in uppercase, which is good. I like that. It distinguishes it from the dialogue. Um, and the character name is centered, whereas the dialogue is still centered in terms of the whole page, but it's set a little bit uh, to the left, so it's taking up this block here, which uh, I like. I think the dialogue needs to be really distinguishable from the character name, but I think that having these huge margins like this, as you can see, there's all this white page. If this continues for the whole, um, I don't know how many pages, this is 80 pages or something, that's wasting a lot of page that you could be using with the dialogue. Um, so personally, I think this is not the most efficient use of a page. Um, and then we've got stage directions that are set to the left, and then we've also got stage directions in the middle of dialogue here set in the centre. So that can be often a little confusing. We've got an open bracket, but no closed bracket. So for me, it's a little bit messy already. Okay, and as we come down, we've got singing. It's clear that it changes into singing here with um, capitals, as opposed to the dialogue, which is in standard case. So I like that. 
So overall, um, not my favorite script format, but you can see the things that it does well. It gets across its information very concisely. Um, it's set up, it does look very professional as a look. For me personally, it's a bit too film scripty, but it does look professional. Um, but personally for me, there's just too many messy things that isn't just completely clean, fresh, and crisp when you first look at it. So now we're going to jump to a different script. We're going to look at the Adams family. So here you can see, uh, again, we're using a slightly scripty font, but it's not too bad this time. And we've got our act one, scene one. To me, this is much more uh, musical theatery. So to talk about it in terms of scenes, acts, things like that, breaking it down, as opposed to settings, locations, times, interior, exterior. So I really like that. And here at the top, we've got a um, little bar, a little block to tell us what piece of music is going to be playing at that time. And I really like that. And it might be a little bit of uh, indication to either a lighting technician or the musicians themselves, but it makes it super, super clear. This piece of music called this will start playing now. And again, it's just about making it as clear as possible for as many people who are going to be reading it as possible. So I really like the inclusion of this. And I also think it can help actors and directors and all sorts of people. So I really like this. Um, now we have some stage directions here, centered. We've got the character uh, names centered in bold. I really like that because again, it just helps that extra piece of distinguishing the different pieces of information. So I know now that character names will always be in bold. I don't have to worry about trying to find some character names in here because I can see clearly, boom, 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 boom. If we go back to Heather's, much less clear. I think if these character names were in bold, that would be way more clear. Um, we've got singing here in capitals and at a different um, indent point to the dialogue here, which is in standard case. And as you can see, compared with Heather's, it takes up a lot more of the page here on the sides, which I think is a huge plus because we're going to be saving paper. It's going to be more efficient. Now we've got stage directions here, these little uh, kind of actor directions in brackets. I like that. It makes it super clear um, that it's a separate piece of information as opposed to the dialogue here. And again, we've got our song bar, song in capitals as opposed to standard case with the indent. So that's two pieces of difference to the dialogue. Not only is it in capitals as opposed to standard case, it's got a separate indent. So it's super, super clear about what piece of information it is. Okay, so if we go back to um, Heather's, you see here we've got dialogue and singing on the same indent. So again, just slightly less clear. So that's Adam's Family. I like it. We're going to go now to Bring It On the musical. Um, here we've got Bring It On. So we've got Act 1, Scene 1, again talking in terms of musical theatre. I like it. Now here we have a similar thing to The Adams Family where they tell us what piece of music is playing, what song it is, and it's super, super clear. You cannot get past this point in the script without going, oh, okay, there's music here. Now we've got uh, stage directions here in sort of italics, I think. You can tell that the font, it looks slightly different to this standard font, which I really like. Again, more than one point of difference. We've got italic-y font plus a different level of in indent. So here we've got character name centered. Uh, that's fine. And it's, again, bolded. We've got two points of difference, centered and bolded character names. This dialogue is super, super clear. And again, super clear. We've got second song playing here, dialogue. And then we've got singing. Again, two points of difference. We've got capitalized and indented. So that here really is the key to make it as clear as possible what the different pieces of information are. And if you can get two points of difference, that really, really helps. Okay, we now are going to be going to my own personal script that I'm going to use as an example. This is a musical that I've been writing. Now, I'm going to show you what I like to do and the little things from each 
um, piece that we've looked at today that I like to include in my own script. So let's go across. This is my own script. Now, number one thing, you need to have a title page. You also need to have a contents page, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I like to say, you know, a little bit of a date of, you know, when I've updated it so that I can know that it's current. And to have your contact information, everything is super important as well. Now, if we go down, you will straight away be able to see which script mine is most similar to, which is bring it on. So this is my script here. And we can see bring it on very similar. So the main differences here is that they've got this big bold font up the top for Act 1, Scene 1 and changing font down the bottom. I like to keep my font the same throughout the whole thing. So I've gone for Times New Roman, which I find to be very timeless, very classy, very classic, uh, very easy to read no matter who you are. And I've gone for these song bars because I really, really like that idea. I think it makes it crystal, crystal clear. Um, and here we have what I like to do. Now, the main thing that you probably notice that's different about my script is that the character names are on the side instead of centered. Now, the reason I like to do this is because I find sometimes when the character names are centered, you find your eyes going from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. You're reading centrally, you're reading from the left, you're reading centrally from the left. Sometimes if there's really quick dialogue, it can be really difficult to keep up with um, who's saying what, especially if your dialogue is set far over to the left because you're going bup, 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 bup. So I've kept everything on my script being read from left to right. And that's because that's the way that we read. If I'm an actor reading a script, my eyes are going to be doing this to read the script successfully. Now, I've got the difference between the dialogue and the singing to be one is capitalized and one is not. Some people find the capitalization to come across too shouty or to be too, I don't know, abrasive. But to me, it just makes it super, super, super clear. Um, you can do all sorts of different positioning on the page or indentation. But to me, capitals, no capitals, super, super clear. And for you, that could be italics for singing and standard for dialogue, as long as it is super different and absolutely clear. I've got my stage directions here in italics and sweeping across the whole page, again, to make use of the whole page to make it as efficient as possible. I've got character names in bold. Again, that's two points of difference, bold, capitals. Um, and I've got everything nice and spaced so nothing feels clunky, conjoined. When you scan this page, you can see super clearly you can see heading, song, you can see dialogue, stage direction, singing, stage direction, singing, stage direction, singing. It just becomes really, really clear, really, really easy to understand. Now here we've got uh, overlapping of singing, which happens all the time in musicals. So here I've kept it the same. I've kept it reading it from left to right. And it would probably be easier in this instance to have the um, name over the top of the dialogue to give us more space. You can see there's a lot of wasted space here. But again, it's about remaining consistent. And this brings me to my final point. The most important thing, whichever little bits of info that you grab from this and the things that you decide to incorporate into your own script, it is important, number one, that you be consistent with it. So for me, that comes down to everything. If I'm going to use Times New Roman, I'm not going to change up fonts for my headings or for anything. If I'm going to go from left to right, I'm not going to change that when my singing overlaps. If I'm going to have one space in between every single piece of dialogue or line of singing, I'm going to always have one space. I'm going to go through rigorously and make sure there are no double spaces. And you might think that this is crazy or OCD, but it really does come down to the smallest details. So for example, uh, when there's two characters singing something here, I've got an and symbol. And all the way through, if there are two sing characters singing, I'm always going to have an and symbol. I'm not going to have a comma or the word and because that would be inconsistent. So I make sure that whatever I do, it is the same throughout the whole way. And that comes down to the absolute smallest details. 
And if you can do that, it honestly doesn't matter what you choose, how you choose to express your singing versus your dialogue, how you choose to express your stage directions, your headings, as long as they are clearly different from each other, clearly different pieces of information, and that you remain absolutely 100% consistent, that is primo. Okay, so if you like the way that I formatted my script and you do like the things that I've chosen, I am going to include a sample down below in the description where you can download a template and it will have all the things already um, input into the document of the different uh, sizes, uh, types of font, bolded, character names, everything. So you can download that and then just put in your own information, make it, make it super, super easy. Um, but the best way, obviously, is for you to experiment, play around, see what works best for you and see how you read it the most easily. You can give it out to actors, ask their advice, ask people's advice. But at the end of the day, you're going to have pretty good instincts about what suits your show, what suits the style of your show and what makes the information, the story that you're trying to tell come across super, super clearly. I know I've said super a lot, but it's super important. It's got to be clear, right? Like sometimes says, everything is in the purpose of clarity, right? Okay, that is it for this video. Please let me know what you found useful, if you have any questions, and let me know what you agree with and what you disagree with, what you think that I'm doing wrong or that uh, the bits that you think could be done even better. Uh, I hope to be making more videos about this kind of stuff, about the nitty gritty of writing a musical. So make sure you subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future.